Hey there, I'm out shooting in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, testing out some new gear. I got the brand new 7 Artisans 50mm f1.8 autofocus lens. That's right, it's their first autofocus lens, and spoiler, it's pretty awesome. Testing this out on the Sony a7C Mark II, and if you're wondering why I keep holding the camera up to my face like I'm taking a photo, well, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Alright, enjoy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little trip around downtown Raleigh and the images that were coming out of this combination. I had a lot of fun with that. So a couple of disclosures up front here. Seven Artisans sent me this lens to test and review, but they didn't pay me anything. They don't get to see this video before it goes up and an opinion about everything is my own. In addition to that, they wanted to make sure that I knew that this was a pre-production prototype model. I'm not really sure what will change between this and the production models that ship out to everybody but I just want to let you know that that as well. Now, in addition to that, I shot this whole thing, as I said, on the Sony a7C Mark II. So big thank you to b &H Photo who lent me that camera to test and review and make videos like all of this for you guys. They've been a huge support of the channel by letting me borrow gear to test and review. If you are looking to pick up some camera gear from b &H Photo, I highly recommend them. I buy most of my stuff from them. There are links in the description for both the Seven Artisans lens and the a7C II and all the gear that I use on a regular basis. So big thank you to b &H Photo. Well, like I just said, I hope you enjoyed the intro to this video. It's kind of a new style I've been working on. I don't know what you call this, this sort of street style stuff. I know there's a lot of street photography stuff out there and, you know, uh, YouTubers doing street photography style videos. Um, this is more like street videography. I'm not really sure. It's just kind of what I like to do. Uh, but for me, it's a great way to show off how a lens and or a camera look uh, and gives me a good chance to actually use the gear like in a run and gun style to get a feel for the ergonomics and how it is to actually use the gear. I also really like to show off as many possible images and, and stuff like that for all of you so you can get a really good sense of what it looks like. I know there's a lot of reviews out there where you don't see a lot of footage, so I try to include as much footage as I can. Now, while I'm out shooting, I, if you were curious, like I mentioned in the intro, I often hold the camera up to my face when I'm taking a photo, and that's because I'm using it to get a third point of contact to get a more stable shot. And I'm also using the EVF while I'm outside because it's a lot easier to see than the LCD. In terms of image quality, I think this lens does a great job. It is pretty contrasty and sharp without being overly sharp and clinical. 
I think it produces some really great colors and really pleasing look to the image overall. I didn't really see many chromatic aberrations. They were pretty well controlled. And overall, I just think the image looks really pleasing. Now I've tested out other Seven Artisans lenses. I've tested out some of their cinema lenses and they kind of give me that same feel where it's not clinically sharp, but it's sharp enough and it's very modern in terms of not having a lot of technical issues to the lens, but it just has a really pleasing image in terms of the contrast and colors and all that sort of stuff. In terms of the flares, you can definitely push this lens really hard to get some flares, but it is pretty hard to get it to flare. And when it does, it does produce some kind of interesting colors and I really like the flares. Now this is Seven Artisans first autofocus lens. And I know a lot of people think of Seven Artisans for their cinema lenses and manual focus stills lenses. So this is their first chance at putting out an autofocus lens on the market. Now, a lot of the shots in the intro were shot with manual focus. It's kind of how I just roll with that stuff so I can really control that. But I wanted to test out the autofocus as well and share that with all of you. So here's the autofocus, I'm testing it out and I have the face eye detect on and this is what's coming out of the camera. So you can see the box on my eye. I have the autofocus transition speed at three and the autofocus subject sensitivity at three. Overall, you know, if I didn't know this was a third party lens, I would just assume it's a Sony lens. I mean, the autofocus is quick to grab on. It seems pretty accurate. It's grabbing my eye. Maybe it's not quite as fast as like a brand new G Master lens, but it works pretty well. And here you take a look at what it actually looks like and how the autofocus is working besides the tracking box. I think it does a great job. I, it, I wouldn't stress about it, I think it works well. Also from this, you can take a look at skin tones and bokeh and also focus breathing as it is going in and out. Overall, like I said, pretty pleasing look. And taking a little bit further of a look into focus breathing, you can see as I go from near to far here, the lens does have some focus breathing, which is not uncommon for a 51.8, but it's not awful, but it definitely breathes a little bit. And I wanted to bring that to your attention. Next, let's talk about the build quality and the ergos of this lens. Now, this is a very inexpensive lens, and I will be talking about that in a few moments, but overall, it does have a more inexpensive feel to the lens. The focus ring is metal. Uh, the build is, is all plastic, but the focus ring and aperture ring are metal. They have this sort of uh, you know rough texture to them, which is fairly easy to grab. The focus ring is very, very stiff. Uh, so you do have to put quite a bit of attention on it to get it to move. Now the aperture ring here, I really don't love. I don't love these on a lot of these autofocus lenses. Now this one is just de-clicked on its own. There is no click or de-click. So you can do aperture racks. But one thing I noticed here is that I usually leave it in the A mode and then use it, control it with the camera. It kind of just falls out of the A. There's no like click or a switch to keep it in, in place. So often it would like fall out and then I'd wonder why I was at a certain aperture and look down the lens. So maybe I should just use the aperture ring and not use it on the camera. I'm not really sure. I wish there was a little bit more confidence in it just clicking into the A, uh, but it is what it is. And this is pretty stiff, which I actually don't mind the aperture ring being stiff, but the focus I think was a little bit stiffer than I'd like. There's also an autofocus manual focus switch here, which uh, you know obviously works. Uh, it's, I think it's a little bit, um, the build quality is not great on the switch, but maybe this was updated on the production model. I'm not really sure. In terms of the front, we have a 62 millimeter filter thread on the front. Nothing really to report about the front. We do also get a lens hood, which I almost never use lens hoods. I always have an ND filter on that for the most part if I'm outside, but it does come with an included lens hood. And onto the back of the lens, we have a metal lens mount with a USB-C port on here, probably to update firmware, no weather sealing. Overall, I think the build quality is what you'd expect at the price point. As I said, we'll talk about price in one second, but I wanna talk about how it is to mount this on a camera. So here it is on the A7C2, which is a sort of smaller bodied camera, similar to like an A6700. So if we have this mounted on here, this is kind of what it looks like. I think it kind of fits the size of it pretty well. It's not too big. Uh, one thing I do wanna point out here is that it kind of sticks out right here. So if you're holding this, like my finger like gets jammed in there, it's kind of awkward. So I have to kind of hold it kind of like this to keep my finger out of that slot in there. But overall, I think it's not a tiny lens, but it's not a huge lens either. So I think it would fit really well on smaller bodies like the like this one here, or maybe the E6700, but it also work on full bodied cameras like the A7 IV, A7S III, FX3, those sorts of cameras. All right, so now let's get on to the price and competition and my recommendations and all that kind of stuff, because the price is really a, the, one of the biggest parts about this lens. At the time of launch, at the time of recording this, this is gonna sell for $228 in the United States. So I think a huge amount of value considering the image quality you get out of it. And when you take a look at the competition, I know everyone thinks, do we really need another 50 mil F1.8? But 
when you actually go and look at what's available for e-mount, if it's full frame, 1.8 or faster, and has autofocus, there's only so many options that are on the inexpensive side. So let's talk about some of those options. We have the Sony 51.8, the Nifty 50 that's been around forever. It's $250, but it's currently on sale for $200. I haven't personally used that lens. It would be kind of an interesting test to, to put it up against this. I know it gets mixed reviews. It's kind of like the cheap lens that people have used before and then maybe move on and upgrade from. Uh, but I think the image quality on this is really nice. I really do like the way the lens looks. We also have the Viltrox 51.8, which I've reviewed some of the other Viltrox lenses. And I think this is probably similar, if not maybe better in some ways than the Viltrox. Uh, I haven't tried the 50. That's I think that's one of the older ones, but I'm not sure. Uh, that one sells for $373. So even if it's close to the same image quality, this is just a little bit more than half the cost. So that's awesome. We also have the Sony 50mm f 2.5G lens. This is a 2.5. It's also a lot more expensive at $550. So that kind of is not really competition. There's a couple of len other lenses to mention. There's the Sigma 50mm F2 Contemporary. Again, not 1.8 and a lot more expensive at $639. They also have the Sigma 50mm uh, 1.4 Art Lens. Again, a lot more expensive at $849. You have the older Sony 50mm F1.4 Planar which goes for a thousand new. I'm sure you can find it a lot cheaper used. And then of course you have the more expensive 1.4 and 1.2 G masters from Sony. I might've missed a few, but I think you get the point for $228. This is an extremely good value considering it has autofocus and really nice image quality. All right, so let me try to wrap this up and give my conclusion and recommendation. I don't really think there are too many negatives about this lens other than the build quality, but given the price, this lens has great value, and the biggest thing it has going for it, of course, is the awesome autofocus, but the image quality is really nice. Like I said, it's not the sharpest or crispiest lens out there. It's not gonna be clinically sharp, but it produces a great image that has awesome contrast and colors, and like I keep saying, just a really pleasing image without having a lot of technical flaws to it. We're not getting a lot of chromatic aberrations and things like that. So for the price, I think it's really tough to beat. Now, I didn't get to test this out on an APS-C camera because I was using the A7C Mark II, which is full frame, but I think it could be a really cool 75 millimeter full frame equivalent on cameras like the FX30 and the A6700. So overall, really happy with this lens. I've been really enjoying the 7 Artisans lenses in general. I think they produce uh, great lenses for the money, good value, all that kind of stuff. I look forward to testing more in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.